Welcome to a new vlog. In this video I'm going to show you how I designed and built this aquarium controller which is capable of monitoring and regulating temperature and humidity with the help of these four output relays. This project started when a friend of mine which has a snake terrarium asked for my help to build a system that is capable of regulating temperature and humidity so that the snake can live in optimum conditions. I'm not necessarily a snake lover, I would rather stay away from uh, those kinds of creatures, but that doesn't stop me from helping my friend. So I started by figuring out what he uses to control temperature and humidity, and it turns out there is some sort of a lamp to provide heat from above, some sort of mains powered stone that heats up and uh, a water fountain, probably one that runs with fog or something like that to control the humidity. And all of these are mains powered and they only need a simple on off control which makes things pretty simple when designing the electronics boards. In terms of digital control I figured uh, it would be nice to be able to update the set points and check up of the status values wirelessly so I went with an ESP32 module and this also helps to add an extra layer of protection to kind of keep the user away from the dangerous mains uh, voltages present uh, on the relays and I can have the whole board uh, enclosed in like a plastic box so the user never goes near the mains voltages. I also wanted the system to have its own power supply so I went with one of these uh, power brick modules. Uh, this one can output 5 volts at 1 amp and this should be uh, more than enough to power the ESP32 and the 4 uh, relay control outputs and with plenty of safety mar margin to spare. As an extra touch I also have an I2C EEPROM chip on here which I can use to store user adjustable variables or maybe do some data logging if necessary. Each relay has one normally open and one normally closed contact and I would recommend hooking it up to uh, keep the relay non-energized for the majority of time. For example, if we know the water fountain is only going to be on for 1% of the total operating time, we would want to connect that to a normally open contact so that the relay is not energized 99% of the time, but will energize and close the contact for the 1% of time that we need it to be operational. In terms of board layout, I went with an enclosure that was pretty cheap and available in stock at a local supplier and I designed all of this uh, PCB based on technical drawings only. I did not have the enclosure at that time and this led to a few mistakes which I made. I will uh, explain those uh, in a second but first let me mention that uh, the the boards were manufactured by PCBWay which is the official supplier of printed circuit boards for the Voldoc channel and I went with the standard green solder mask and a hassle finish for this board because there was nothing on this board uh, requiring uh, more than the standard setup. As I was saying there were a few mistakes made on this PCB and first of all I forgot to add the uh, mounting holes uh, to be able to screw the PCB down to these mounting posts in the enclosure. I designed this uh, footprint for the enclosure in KiCad with mounting holes and then I did the layout on top of that. However, I forgot to manually add the uh, actual mounting holes uh, on the alignment marks of the footprint. And to be honest, it would have been pretty difficult to add them with the current layout because of the relays and the fuse holders. They take up so much space inside. So, um, I will have to secure this with some double-sided tape inside the enclosure. The next mistake that I did was with the size of these cutouts on the sides of the board. There are uh, these very thick standoffs inside the enclosure and I got the dimensions wrong for these cutouts and the workaround for this uh, error was to basically use the Dremel and grind away some of the material in here to extend these uh, cutouts. Luckily there were no tracks in this area, there was just some uh, ground plane but nothing that can't be grinded away. I just need to add a bit of uh, fresh solder mask to electrically seal that tiny area of exposed ground plane. But the most annoying mistake that I made on, on this board is with the power brick. Like I mentioned, I was working on this solely based on technical drawings. Some of these drawings have annotations in Chinese and it seems I didn't get the footprint right for the power brick. 
I thought I was designing for a top view and I meant the module to go on this side, but it turns out the drawing was flipped for a bottom view in terms of uh, pinout. So because of that, I had to uh, move the uh, power module to the bottom of the board. And because I moved the power brick, I also moved the connectors on this side of the board uh, because it was uh, now pretty difficult to have all the wires on top of the board. This was an unpleasant mistake, but I'm glad I could make it work without needing a respin of this board. And if there is enough interest for uh, this board, I could probably fix all of these issues in a second revision. But for now, this is good enough and it works for a one-off project. In terms of safety, every uh, mains channel is uh, protected with a fuse and uh, the uh, PCB tracks that lead to the relays should be good for up at least 5 amps safely. Uh, there is also a varistor on the input of the power brick, the datasheet of the power brick recommended that. And there is also a fuse for the power brick. The low voltage area is not exactly isolated from the high voltage area because they are uh, connected through this uh, low side driver. But since this will be uh, isolated inside the plastic enclosure, I think that is fine. There won't be any uh, work conducted on this board while it's mains powered. Uh, the connection will be through Wi-Fi. So that should be fine. In terms of sensors, I'm using one of these uh, one wire uh, humidity uh, and temperature uh, sensors and there are two of these dedicated uh, ports just in case you would ever need to connect two sensors that have the same address or something like that. There is a pin header for the I2C bus, there is a, a uh, general purpose IO pin header and an analog input header just in case you would want to control something else externally or measure something with the internal ADC of the ESP32. So this board kind of allows you to build a wide variation of projects uh, with all of these IOs available. Now to discuss the topic of firmware, I went with the Arduino framework uh, and I uh, created the project in the platform IO development environment because I wanted to give my friend a chance of dipping his toes into the code as well, but also to make this project appealing to a wide public because same as with every other project that I release, this is completely open source and I encourage you to get the source files, modify them and make your own version. As it stands, the code that I publish is a work in progress, it's still a beta, but it does have two control loops, one for humidity and another one for temperature, and by adjusting these set points and hysteresis values in the code, you can adjust this to your needs and it will toggle uh, one of these relays to control the heater and another one to control the water fountain. I'm also working on implementing a watchdog and some safety limits just so we do not accidentally give our pet a sunburn but we'll see if that gets pushed to the repository before I upload this video. Just so you know, it's a beta, so uh, I encourage you to check every line of code. There's also a second part of the code which is a work in progress. This is an asynchronous web server that runs on the SP32 and provides the user with a web interface to monitor the status of the system and also allow the user to adjust the set points for temperature and humidity as well as to provide manual override for the relay outputs. But like I said, it's still a work in progress and the web interface is up and running. It's just that it's not all glued together uh, with the control logic that's running the relays. I'll probably assemble another one of these uh, with the components I have left and I'll put it up on Tindy. It will be just a board without any enclosure or other accessories, but it will be a fully functional board nonetheless. If anyone is interested in grabbing one, check out the Tindy link I'll place on screen right now. And uh, what can I say? Hurry up, because there's only going to be one or two available. I'm uh, going to have to check how many components I have left and see if I can build another one of these or maybe two. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts on this uh, project, if you have done it differently and why, or maybe share some of your experience in building similar projects. Our pet, the snake, seems to be pretty happy with uh, how this new controller works and it keeps its environment within a tighter tolerance than it was ever possible before uh, just with manual human intervention. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I would really appreciate if you would just smash that like button. And if you found the video useful, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I will see you next time.